This meeting is being recorded. Okay, so hello, first of all, and thank you for being here. I am going to talk in this presentation about Wikibase for GLAM organizations. Wikibase uh, and how it's being used by GLAM organizations or what it could offer for GLAM organizations to, you know, what kind of, what it could offer to GLAM organizations. Okay, so it's going to be, I'm going to be focusing a lot on collections in the linked open data web. But the first thing I'm going to do is say who I am. I'm Christos Varvantakis. I am a partnerships manager at Wikimedia Deutschland. I am responsible for connecting with global institutions and help them on board into the linked open data web. And I also act as a point of contact and information exchange for partners for Wikimedia Germany software department and the wiki communities. Another thing I should uh, address before getting into the conversation and into the presentation is where I'm coming from. I mentioned that I work for Wikimedia Deutschland. Wikimedia Deutschland then is, we are a non-profit organization based in Berlin. We are the German chapter of the global Wikimedia movement. What is perhaps a bit peculiar in our case is that we have a dedicated software development department. And therein, mainly, we develop and we maintain Wikibase and Wikidata. These two are also in the heart of our linked open data vision. But as I promised, I'm going to be talking about Wikibase, Wikibase for GLAM organizations. But first of all, the question would be then, what is Wikibase? Wikibase is free software that stores and organizes information that can be collaboratively edited and read by humans and by computers, can be translated into multiple languages and shared with the rest of the world as part of the linked open data web. It, is, it was launched in 2012 by Wikimedia Deutschland and we continue to maintain it today. Also, Wikibase powers Wikidata and another very wide range of other linked open data projects. I mentioned quite a few times the term linked open data until now. And I think this is a very good starting point from which to enter onto the Wikibase world. Linked open data then essentially talk about open data that are also linked. Open data are data that are openly accessible, exploitable, editable, and shared by anyone for any purpose. And linked data are structured data which are interlinked with, each, with other data so that they become more useful through semantic queries. If we take a look at this diagram, at this uh, graphic representation <coughs> of what Tim Berners-Lee calls the five-star open data model, we would see that, for example, the one-star open data would refer to something that is made available on the web. For example, a paper or some research data shared as a PDF. Whereas, for example, a two-star uh, a two-star open data example would be the same sort of data, but open and shared in a structure as structured data. So not a scan of a table, not a PDF of a table, but an Excel, for example. <coughs> the, the, top of the, the top of the scale here, the top of the list, is the five-star open data, which would essentially mean that you link your data to other data in order to provide context. Next, then, is how, how does this work, how linked open data work? And the best example to get an understanding of linked open data is, as a matter of fact, Wikidata that we have here. So let's take a look at Wikidata then. Wikidata is a Wikimedia project, again, starting in 2012. It's free and open, it's a free and open knowledge base 
the biggest, the largest one of its kind uh, right now in the world. It contains structured data. It can be linked and it is linked to other databases. All data there are available under a CC0 license and it's based on statements and references. It's made for humans and machines, it's collaborative and it is multilingual. If we return now to our definition of Wikibase, we will notice that I said that uh, Wikibase stores and organizes information. And one might wonder, okay, but how does it do that? And again, to get an understanding of how this happens, we will get to the example of the Wikidata, which, as a matter of fact, is the biggest Wikibase instance. So, data are modeled with, uh, in terms of what we call triples. The triple structure refers to, I to items, to properties, and to values. So, we have items, unique items, each of which has a unique item identifier, the Q identifier, as we call it. And then we have statements that basically, basically comprise of properties and values that correspond to these properties. But the question then is, uh, not, what is very peculiar and what is very important in this way of organizing data is the fact that a property or a value for a property can be an item in itself. So, for example, for Maggie Angelou, which was the example we looked at before, the fact that she was born in St. Louis, so we have, we have a property place of birth, and then as a value, we have St. Louis. But St. Louis is also an item in itself. It's not just the value for where Maggie Angelou was born. It's an item in itself with its own set of statements, comprising again of properties and values. In this way of organizing a database, we can essentially make what we call a knowledge base and we can create a much more complicated and a much more rhizomatic, if you like, way of organizing data. In addition, Wikidata and Wikibase allows for uh, querying their data, querying the data that are within a database, either the Wikidata or any Wikibase instance, through, through the powerful query language, the Sparkle, which can give us, uh, as for example here, this Wikidata query, the number of musicians in Wikidata by country. However, if one looks uh, closely you know, at this graph that we're seeing right here, it, you will also notice a part of the problem of how knowledge is being represented through this database, through Wikidata. There is an unequal distribution which becomes apparent when you look at you know, how many musicians are coming from the United States of America. It seems to be disproportionately large, so to say. And this actually refers and gets back to the point that it matters where the data come from and it really matters who participates in building this open knowledge graph. Anyway, to return now to our definition, I also mentioned that Wikibase is essentially a software. So you might wonder what sort of a software is it? It's a software that comes in two versions, the suite and the cloud version, as we call them. The, both are free, both are open. The essential difference is that Wikibase Suite is, is a software suite that you have to download and to, ma to maintain in your own servers. So the hosting would be self-managed. Whereas for Wikibase Cloud, which is a relatively new uh, platform product that we are offering, this is it will be hosted by us, by the Wikimedia Germany. It will be hosted in Europe and therefore be like GDPR compliant. Then the technical expertise that is involved for the installation, it would be intermediate 
to expert for suite and it would be novice for cloud. With suite, you can make an unlimited number of wiki bases, of course, whereas for wiki based cloud, we have uh, limited this to six per wiki based cloud user account in order not to overwhelm everything. And as we are just, it's a new product, as I said. So we are learning and we want to keep everything a little bit in one place. And then the Wikibase suite will allow, of course, for a very, very high uh, level of customization, whereas this is limited in the Wikibase cloud. Wikibase offers the following. The users can create and they can manage their own linked open knowledge spaces in the way that I described them before. Its flexibility allows users to build their own data models that suit their needs. Then, the MediaWiki interface means that users can easily access and update data. And just like in Wikidata that we saw before, users can interact with their data using the Sparkle language. Wikibase thus is ideal for structured data collections, especially those that call for a flexible data model. It is ideal for linking databases to external sources, for collaborative projects where many people edit and manipulate data, for data that should be both human and machine readable, and for projects that involve multilingual labeling. <coughs> this is more or less how we envision the future of the Wikibase ecosystem, where different uh, Wikibase instances together with Wikidata, the, let's say the largest database around, will connect and talk to each other and we will create, uh, we will create these sort of connections between properties and items where everybody will be giving information, will be giving data, giving properties as well as taking properties that are and information and data that are already there, out there. Now, how does this relate to the glam world, one might ask? And if we get back to our definition of weak base, we can take a look at who is actually using it. Which are these linked open data projects that facilitate it? And if we look at this, of who, is, who are actually the users, then we find out that as a matter of fact, many, a lot of our uh, users are from the GLAM world, are GLAM institutions or organizations or practitioners. <coughs> a very large amount of those are libraries. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Wikibase is currently being used or is being under evaluation by several libraries for a number of purposes, as a matter of fact, including the German National Library, the Finnish National Library, the National Library of Greece recently, or the Smithsonian Libraries in the US. And let's look at a couple of more examples of who is actually using it. The Fact Grid is a project that started pretty early. I think it was one of the first like uh, big Wikibase instances that were out there. It started as a project between historians to document the history of the Illuminati, but it has grown up to a collaboratively historic, collaborative historical database, which is used by historians and others. And it functions as an archive, as a living archive, and a place for research, for you know, collaboratively adding and editing data mostly aimed at, hist at historians. Rhizome, another of uh, our early adopters of Wikibase, is an art organization in New York, based in New York City. They started using Wikibase in 2015 for hosting their archive of born digital art and for the digital preservation activities. They mentioned that uh, that the flexible model of Wikibase helps capture the constantly changing nature of digital art. 
So it enables work with heterogeneous data and flexible data structures. They say that uh, it offers an ontological sandbox and space for experimentation. It works in that it makes you're making claims and you're making statements. You do not present facts and truth, which would be problematic in the context of born digital art, if not of art in general, as a matter of fact. It allows for multiple values per property, which is very useful for digital artifacts and artworks, which uh, don't have a single, a canonical version, so to say. And it serves their software preservation needs and it allows them to connect data across different knowledge bases. Another very significant example of who is using it is the enslave.org, which is, oh, excuse me, which is a linked open database about the history of transatlantic slave trade. It has been using Wikibase as a linking hub and the reconciliation hub. It has, it has united several different databases. It has bring, it has bring together data from several different disconnected, unconnected until then databases and has created an amazing system of, you know, searching through this linked open data in ways in which, for example, you could, you know, trace down life histories and so on and so forth. I consider this to be an excellent example and wonderful work. Another example, uh, pretty recent too, and this is one that is being, that was built in, a, that is built on a Wikibase cloud, on Wikibase cloud. The previous ones were all Wikibase suite. Is the Evan Steves archive from the National Gallery of Art in the US, where while they have been promoting greater diversity for in its collections and exhibitions, and as part of their efforts, they have launched a Wikibase project in order to increase visibility, connectivity, and accessibility of African-American artists. Uh, as they say in the, let's say, evaluation and the lessons learned by this experience, they say that Wikibase Cloud is effective for data storage, curation, and retrieval of internal data in the linked data environment. It allows for easy creation of linked data without maintaining an IT server or infrastructure. Uh, it allows for full control of data ownership and data management. It has an effective user management and no approval process and easy creation of properties. That's pretty much it, but I'd like to close with this other small example of a GLAM organization that, again, is very close to our hearts. It's the Rewatch Museum in Arunachal Pradesh in India, which is currently building um, its collection its ethnographic collection into a Wikibase cloud instance in order, again, to increase visibility and connectivity of such data. So that's pretty much it about Wikibase, but I'd like to close with the fact that as many Wiki products, Wiki platforms, it has a dedicated community around it that is there to support, is there to discuss, to offer example, inspiration, and so on and so forth. So by getting into this, uh, into Wikibase Cloud, you also have the possibility to be part of this wonderful and lively community. And he, there is a growing amount and growing, uh, growing documentation, technical documentation about Wikibase. We are working on it, users and the community is working on it, but we do work on it as best as we can to create comprehensive uh, guides and documentation for Wikibase, which you can find here. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. And please do get in touch if you have anything to, to ask or to discuss. So thank you. the recording mm -hmm. 
Ok. Euh... Hmm. I try to stop the recording, but I'm not sure even. Yeah, right here. Stop.